Okay, there's just one final topic that we want to talk about here um, that has to do with the functional group known as nitriles. Okay, so uh, we talked about in the very beginning how um, we're going to talk about carboxylic acid derivatives, um, but then we also threw in nitriles um, into this mix. Um, and the reason that we do that is because they're at the same oxidation state as a carboxylic acid. And so um, in a lot of ways, the some of the sort of the fundamentals um, are similar uh, with with nitriles and carboxylic acids. And uh, in fact, the interconversion of carboxylic acids and nitriles um, is uh, sort of has more in common uh, than really with any other functional group. And so it really makes sense to talk about these here. Um, so we'll just do this very briefly. Well, the first thing is, um, how do we synthesize um, nitriles? Okay, so we talked about a, a few methods here. We'll just remind you that if uh, you have an alkyl halide um, or an alkyl tosylate for that matter, that is um, prone to do SN2 chemistry, um, so either of these, you can uh, actually just do a substitution with, um, with uh, cyanide, right? So potassium cyanide, sodium cyanide, either of these would work. Um, and you're basically just going to do a substitution. And this is a very useful uh, bit of chemistry because this is one of the few reactions where you add just a single carbon. So it's a one carbon homologation, uh, as chemists would say. Um, and that, that actually turns out to be very useful. Okay, so we've already talked about those. Um, there's one that we haven't talked about though. Um, and this actually uh, turns out to be very useful. Uh, this is going to be the uh, dehydration reaction. Um, and we're basically gonna dehydrate um, what are called primary amides. Okay, so primary just means that um, there is nothing on the nitrogen of the amide. So we're gonna have just uh, carbonyl attached to NH2. So, so this is a primary amide. Okay, and what we're gonna do here is just throw in a very strong dehydrating agent. So uh, we're gonna use uh, thionyl chloride, right? the same reagent that we use to convert carboxylic acids to acid chlorides. Um, you might know that uh, other things like POCl3 would also work, um, but we could just limit it to this one. Um, but basically, if we treat a primary amide with thionyl chloride, we will actually convert this to the nitrile, right? Well, it looks a little bit magical, but really all we're doing here is ripping off. So there's oxygen and there's H2. We're basically just ripping off H2O. Hence, we call this a dehydration reaction. Okay. How does this work? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our primary amide. And now remember, we talked about how, um, you know, you draw the resonance form of the amide and you basically put the lone pair on the nitrogen in and then take this pair of electrons up. And so there's a lot of electron density at the oxygen. In fact, that's where all of these carbonyl derivatives are nucleophilic is at the oxygen. Okay. So if we throw in thionyl chloride, which remember is an extremely strong electrophile, um, we basically can, can have the amide, um, and I'm, I'm going to do this this way. I'm actually going to involve the nitrogen lone pair here um, as, I, as I sort of do this, this mechanism. Um, and, you know, just so you're not confused, I, I could I could draw a resonance form and then use that you know that uh, uh, charged resonance form to do this mechanism too. Both of those are legitimate. Okay, I'm just going to push the arrows um, uh, from from the same intermediate. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll react these two, and we'll get to this type of intermediate here. All right. So remember, this is the it looks like the tetrahedral intermediate. Um, of, of a nucleophilic acyl substitution, and it, and it really, in many ways, is. Um, it's just happening at a sulfur-oxygen double bond. Um, and then we're just going to allow this to kick back down and kick out chloride. So this is really just like reaction of, um, with an acid chloride. Um, so once we do that, we are going to be at this stage. Okay. All right, and, uh, and our counter ion here is going to be chloride. That's what we just kicked off. Okay, so now what we've done here is, uh, is we basically converted that oxygen now, in, again, into something that's going to be a great leaving group. So, so we're, we're basically um, going to be um, very much on our way to, to kicking that oxygen off and letting it be very stable when we do that. Um, first, what we're gonna do is, is actually 
um, deprotonate uh, this this um, NH2 group here, this aminium uh, ion looking thing. So we'll deprotonate there and that will get us to this intermediate. Okay, so uh, basically a neutral compound at this point. Um, <clears throat> and now there, I, I could do this either of two ways. Um, either I could use the lone pair uh, of, the, of the, um, the nitrogen here and just kick in and, and kick off this whole thing um, and then deprotonate. Um, it, that would be fine. There's really no problem with doing that. Um, but I'm just gonna make things just one step simpler. I'm just going to involve a base in deprotonating um, as I do that. I really kind of feel like it's splitting hairs um, here. So um, we might as well just do the thing that's a little bit easier. So uh, essentially we're gonna deprotonate here and then the, the electrons from that NH bond are going to dump down and then that's going to eject this whole thing as a leaving group, right? So that's going to spit up, right? There we go. Um, this looks just like the, you know, the way that this served as a leaving group for the conversion to an acid chloride from a carboxylic acid, okay? It's, it's all just the same. Um, it's just in this case, we're, we're helping that be a leaving group um, by using these electrons, right? So remember, we're going to have these electrons dump in, um, but that actually then, uh, you know, plays you know, past the hot potato here, um, and it, it, it's not going to stay um, on, you know, on the solver species. That going to kick off uh, the chloride because the chloride is is the most stable. Okay, so when that happens, here you can see that we've just formed our nitrile. We've kicked off SO2 gas. Remember that goes away, and then we've ultimately dumped the electrons onto chloride. Okay, and then. Uh, the base, whatever the base would be, which is probably chloride in the end, um, is going to going to have that that proton. Okay, um, and so so basically that's that's all it is. Thionyl chloride is just a, the world's most powerful dehydrating agent, um, and you're basically just reacting the amide with that so that you can have the O serve as a leaving group, and then the nitrogen basically just kicks in and forms a triple bond. Okay. So that's that's very straightforward. And by the way, um, if you were wondering why we needed something like DCC um, as a reagent to convert carboxylic acids to amides or to esters for that matter, um, why we couldn't just always use acid chloride formation, well, this is one of the major re reasons. So imagine that you have a molecule that has a carboxylic acid and then elsewhere you already have amides. Okay. And that's going to be actually pretty typical, especially in pharmaceutical um, agents or, or more complex molecules. So imagine you have a carboxylic acid, you want to make another amide at that point, but you already have an amide in place. You can't throw thionyl chloride at that because the amide is going to do something like this. If it's a primary amide, it can go all the way to the, to the nitrile. Um, but even if it's a tertiary or secondary amide, they're still going to do the, sort of the first part of this mechanism and screw everything up. It's going to be a total disaster. Um, and so uh, this is, that's one of the reasons that you can't do that. Um, DCC won't do this process though, so it's much more mild. Um, and other types of nucleophilic functionality wouldn't be appropriate with acid chloride formation either. So in case you were wondering, um, that's why we need uh, more mild reagents. Okay, so those are the really the two major ways to make nitriles um, for the most part, uh, either substitution or dehydration. Um, and just to kind of end this off, we just want to talk uh, quickly about the reactions of nitriles, um, and you know, just so so we understand why in the world we're making these things. Um, and again, we've already talked about some of these, so just want to remind you that you can take a nitrile and reduce it. So uh, remember, if we do uh, dibol with a nitrile, and remember, we're just going to work this up with acid always. This goes to the aldehyde. Remember, it doesn't go further. Um, you can go back to that video if you need to remember why. Um, on the other hand, we can take a nitrile and treat it with a much more powerful reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride, and get this to uh, reduce all the way down to the amine. Okay. So now, you know, keep these in mind because now you know how to take. Um, you could take a carboxylic acid. You could convert it to the primary amide. 
you could then dehydrate it to the nitrile and then you could uh, reduce it all the way down to the primary mean, right? There might be more efficient ways to do that, but that's certainly one way uh, to, to do things. Um, okay, so reduction. Uh, we also talked about alkylation, by the way. Um, how about hydrolysis? What if we have a nitrile and we want to come back to the carboxylic acid? Well, actually, this is something that we talked about already as well. So if we have a nitrile and you, you treat this with um, aqueous water, and usually there's going to be some heat involved, you can actually hydrolyze um, the nitrile to the carboxylic acid. Okay? Um, and that, you know, that can be a useful thing to do as well. So if we do that one carbon homologation uh, for the SN2 synthesis of a nitrile, that then allows us to get to the carboxylic acid. Um, and we also talked about that in the cyanohydrin uh, formation. Okay, so, um, right, so hydrolysis and then, uh, right, alkylation was the other uh, one that we talked about. So we can take a nitrile and we can treat that with, for example, a alkyl green yard followed by a protic workup. Okay, and that's going to get us to a ketone. Okay, so now we have a, a lot of uh, sort of potential in terms of interconversions, um, both through carboxylic acid derivatives and now also through the nitriles.